Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Middletown Presbyterian Church this morning. Some things to bring to your attention. Uh, immediately following our worship service today downstairs, uh, the youth are hosting a pancake breakfast, so uh, please come down and join us for that. Probably sometime in the service you'll start smelling the sausage cooking and uh, that will get your uh, appetite going, uh, so come and join us for that. Tomorrow at noon in our chapel, uh, our primetime plus group is meeting and it's going to be a celebration uh, of our veterans. Uh, so if you are a veteran or if you'd just like to uh, encourage and celebrate our veterans, uh, please come out tomorrow at noon, uh, enjoy a nice lunch and a, and a program uh, honoring our veterans. Uh, this Wednesday is our final family night uh, of the season, so uh, even if you haven't come before, come on out uh, on Wednesday night, 6 o'clock is dinner, and then uh, we uh, introduce a topic and we have a chance to, to break into smaller groups and, and talk about it. Uh, so come join us for that. Uh, it's a good time together as the family of God. Uh, youth and anybody else who's interested, uh, on Saturday, uh, next Saturday, we have uh, our, uh, we go down and, and help uh, city team distribute uh, food boxes for Thanksgiving. So uh, come on out uh, on Saturday and join us for that. Uh, and Tim Love, I believe, has some announcements for us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I love being up here, let me tell you. <laughs> um, a couple announcements. Uh, one was on the adopt a child. Uh, we appreciate everybody getting their uh, request in for adopt a child. Um, we received an email late yesterday and it was corrupted, so we're waiting to have a new email back and we should have everybody's request filled by Tuesday. Um, those gifts are due back uh, December 10th, so we can get them to uh, the village. Um, formerly known as the Presbytery Children's Village. Um, also, there's a box in the Narthex for unwrapped gifts that are going to go to City Team. Um, we'd like them in by, I believe, the 9th of December, but if stragglers come in, I'll make sure they get down to City Team. Um, also, uh, there's a wrapping party at the Children's Village um, on December 16th. I believe it's at 11 a.m. If anyone wants to know about it, we just go down, wrap gifts, about three hours, cookies, coffee, um, just a nice little get together. Um, also, uh, for the youth, the, the Joe Corby's is due um, in by next Sunday. Um, the, the delivery of the cookies and pizza and whatnot will be December 10th, so everyone can bake their cookies for the cookie walk. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. All right, so <clears throat> get your adopt a child requests in, uh, well, pretty much immediately. Um, Joe Corby's is due by next week, uh, and uh, there's also a wrapping party at the village, uh, so remember all those. Also, just uh, bring your attention not this week, but next week on Thanksgiving Day, we have our annual Thanksgiving Day uh, worship service at 9.30, uh, so come out and join us as we give thanks to the Lord for all that He has done for us. And I think that's all of our announcements this morning, uh, and so let us begin our worship. Good morning. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord.
You may be seated. God's Word tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but it also tells us that there is more love in God than there is sin in us. So let us come before His throne of mercy and grace to confess our sins, that we might be forgiven. Let us pray together. Gracious Savior, You asked for my hands that You might use them for Your purpose. I gave them for a moment, then withdrew them, for the work was hard. You asked for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper that I might not be accused. You asked for my eyes to see the pain of poverty. I closed them, for I did not want to see. You asked for my life that you might work through me. I gave a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive my calculated efforts to serve you, only when it is convenient for me to do so, only in those places where it is safe to do so, and only with those who make it easy to do so. Father, forgive me, renew me, Send me out as a usable instrument that I might take seriously the meaning of your cross. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but should have life everlasting. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
Today's Old Testament reading is Psalm 33, verses 1 through 9, and you can find that on page 394 of your pew Bible. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the work of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning, for this new opportunity to gather together in your name, to worship you, to spend some time in your word, and to learn from you. And Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us this morning, that you would fill us, that you would open our hearts and minds to whatever it is that you have for us today, that we might be transformed. Uh, and that we might help you as you seek to transform this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, and transformation is part of what we have been talking about uh, through this series, um, Kingdom Accounting, because Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom. And I've, uh, I've shared with you the fact that Jesus did not speak about the kingdom as though it was something that was, that was to come only in heaven, only after this life, but the kingdom was initiated. The kingdom started when Jesus came to earth, and Jesus uh, wants us to continue uh, that kingdom. In fact, uh, that is why we exist. I mean, we, we look at the world around us. And if you watch the news or read the news or pay any attention to what's going on in the world around you, 
you're probably aware that things are not as good as they could be, or even as good as they should be. Certainly in the news, pretty much all that we hear is, is bad news. The things that are going wrong, the, the murders and the disasters. And we wonder, why doesn't God intervene? Why, why doesn't God come and, and do something? Well, He has done something. He created you. He created me. And He expects us as His family, as His children, as, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven to do our part. You see, that's part of the whole point of coming to Jesus. Yes, we are saved. We're brought back into relationship with God and we are promised eternity with Him. But in this world, at this time, we are to allow God to fill us, to, to transform us, to transform the way that we think, the way that we behave, the things that we do, the things that are of priority to us, so that as we begin to behave differently in the world, we begin to transform the world. And that's what many of these parables that Jesus uh, shares with us are about. And so we come to our passage for today from Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14. For it is as if, for it is as if a man... Now, first of all, what is it? Well, he's continuing to talk about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. So it is this kingdom that he's been talking about. So the kingdom is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed me over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who had ten talents, for to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. For as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a fairly, I think, familiar passage. We've heard it over and over again, but there's some things I want you to notice in this story that, that Jesus tells. First, we have this, this master, this king, 
who decides to go on a journey. And so, once again, we have this uh, scenario set up where the king, the master, the boss goes away, but he's going on a, a journey and he is expected to return. So really what Jesus is talking about here is that period, just like we talked about last week, that period between His ascension and His coming again. So it, it's, it's that period in which we exist. Jesus has come, He has ascended into heaven, He has promised to come again, but we are in that waiting period. And, and so that is the period that He's talking about. And He, he says, it, during that period, the kingdom of God will be like. And so, the kingdom of God evidently exists during that period. Because it will be like, during that period, this king who goes off on a journey. And he calls his slaves to him. Now, that also is important. They are slaves. Now, slaves assuming that they are good and honest and trustworthy slaves, they exist to serve their master. That is what they do. They don't do anything outside of what their master has asked them to do. And so he calls his slaves to him and he gives to them resources. Now, a talent you might have this in, in a footnote in your Bible. One talent at the time that Jesus was telling this story was equal to approximately 15 years of a regular working person's salary. So this was not an insignificant sum. This was, this was a pretty good amount of money. And so he splits it up and he gives pretty significant amount of resources to each of these slaves. Now it also tells us that he gives to each according to their abilities. So he doesn't just give them this stuff willy-nilly. He knows their abilities and he gives them what he thinks they can handle. So he doesn't give above what, what they are capable of dealing with. But he gives them these resources. Now the interesting thing about these resources is he's going away. As, a sla as his slaves, it is his responsibility to care for them, to make sure that they have food and clothing and what they need to survive. But these resources, these talents that he gives them, evidently these he did not give them for maintenance. He didn't give them these things for their sustenance. He didn't give them these talents simply to help them survive while he was gone. Because we see that two of these slaves take the money and put it to work. And in fact, they double it. So he didn't give them the money and then they just used it for their daily needs so that when he returned they just gave him whatever change was left over as those of you who are parents might experience with your children but rather he gave them this money and they put it to work and in fact the first two servants doubled his money now when he comes back and he finds the third slave who came to him and said I knew that you were a hard taskmaster and, and I was worried about what would happen if, if I messed up, if I, if I used up this money, so I just hid it away so that it would be all there when you returned. <coughs> now the master says, you could have at least put it in the bank so that I would have at least gotten simple interest on it. Now, that is the least that he could do. The, the master was not suggesting this as a course of action. He was simply saying, that's the least you could do. But he was quite happy with what 
the first two slaves had done. For they had doubled his money. Now, if you put your money in a bank, you will get simple interest. Very simple interest. <laughs> to double your money means that these two slaves took a risk. You, you cannot double your money without risking something. They must have invested it in much more questionable or, or at least risky things than just putting it in a, a bank account because they doubled his money. Now for us, God, as, as his children, as his servants, God gives each of us resources. Now, for some of us, those may, our major resource, it might be money. For others of us, it might not be money. It might be something else. But He gives us resources. He gives us gifts that He expects us to use, not just for our sustenance, not just to keep us going, to, to help us to survive. These servants, these first two servants, increased their master's holdings. They increased his empire. That is what we are called to do. We, we are called to use the resources that God gives us to expand his kingdom, to, to expand his reach in the world, to expand the church, to expand his family. And sometimes that means taking some risk. Now, that means as a church, we together should be using the resources that we have been given by God to expand His kingdom in the world. As, as we talked about last week with uh, the, the ten virgins and their, their lights, to, to take our light out into the world to bring light into the darkness. That is what we're called to do, and we're called to use our resources to do that, to expand His kingdom. But often, often we look at the world around us, and we think, well, we don't know what's, what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know how the stock market's going to do. We don't know uh, what... The economy is going to do. We don't know uh, if somebody might break in. We don't know if there's a storm that will uh, rip part of the roof off of the church. We, we don't know what's going to happen. And so we need to, we need to hoard. We need to save. Our, we need to take the resources that we have and bury them for a rainy day. That's what the third servant did. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I knew that, that you would be upset if I lost this money. And so I hid it so that it would still be there when you got back. That is our tendency as human beings, to, to hold on to it because we don't know what's coming. But I want you to consider a different scenario. Let's just consider that we serve a God with unlimited resources. We serve a God whose resources are not affected by human economy, whose resources are not affected by natural or any other sort of disaster, whose resources are not affected by jobless rates. Who, regardless of what is going on in the world, still has limitless resources. And he makes those resources available to his people who serve him. But he expects those resources to be used, 
to expand His kingdom, to take His light and His love out into the world and to share it with others. Do you think that that God would allow future calamity, future disasters, future anything you can think of to to stand in the way of His people doing what He's called them to do? You see, God gives stuff, resources, money, talents to be used for His kingdom to bring love and understanding and hope to His world. But He wants us to use those resources, not to, to hold on to them so tightly, but to use them for what they were intended to be used for. We have three slaves. The third is cast into the outer darkness. Now understand, all are servants of the king. Two use the resources given in the way their master intended. One does not. The two who use the resources, one are given additional resources. They're rewarded. Now, you could also see that as they're also given more responsibility. But they are given more because they use them the way God intended. Not only are they given more resources, but they are invited in. The Master says, come in and celebrate with me. Come into the joy of your master. They're invited into the inner circle. They're invited not only, it, it, it's not just a pat on the back. It's not just a good job. You did well. Keep up the good work. No, it's a come in, let's celebrate the fact that you have done well. Let's throw a party on your behalf. And notice, both of the first two servants received the same reward. One started with five, one started with two, but they both doubled what they were given. And they both received the same reward, the joy of their master, and more resources. Now, if we consider our church... One of the things that I hear often is, we, we, need, we need more members. We need more people in the pews. We, we need people to be here. I couldn't agree more. But notice the pattern. If you do well with what you have, more will be given. If you're not using what you have the way that God wants you to use what you have, not only will you not get more, you will lose what you have. So if we want more people, if we want bigger ministries, we need to make sure that we are using the resources God has given us in the ways that He would have us use them. For one, that we're actually using them and not just holding on to them. Now, does that, that mean we should just spend all our money? No. At least not willy-nilly. We should spend it on those things that are kingdom building, that are doing those things that God would have us to do 
to build His kingdom. But it's not just about money. Every one of us should be contributing what we have, what our resources are, our time, our talent, our love, our care, to one another and to the community around us. Because that's what God has called us to do. And if we're not doing it, why are we here? On the front of your bulletin, it tells us or reminds us what we have said our mission is. To know Christ and to make Him known. If we aren't using our resources for that purpose, then what are we doing? We need to use all that we have to increase God's kingdom here on earth because that is our call. And as you see at the end of the parable, not following that call, not using the resources does not have a very pretty outcome. We need to use it or lose it. Let us use it to further God's kingdom and bring Him the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
prayer. Uh, so <clears throat> if there are things for prayer, I've received a few cards. Uh, we are trying uh, something a little different to, to try and make uh, this go a little more smoothly during the service. So I'm taking uh, prayer requests uh, verbally when we get to the, the prayer time. But if you, if you do lift a request, if you, if you mention something, if you would also fill out one of the yellow prayer cards and put that in the offering so that it will get to uh, Danielle and we'll get onto the, uh, our uh, prayer list uh, that we pray through uh, during the week. So what do we have for prayer this morning? Ginny. Mm. Okay, so having fusion surgery on her neck, which will mean she can't drive, and her husband already can't drive, so that needs some prayer as well. Other things? Don. Wow. Excellent. Our... <laughs> 220 kids signed up, and usually some more straggle in as, as the season gets started, so we'll, uh, that's great. Other things? All right, well, let us go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your love for us that You have reached out to us, that You have given us Your Son uh, through whom we can be brought back into relationship with You. Lord, we thank You for Your calling upon each and every one of us, and we pray that You would continue to work in us and through us, transforming us and teaching us how You would want to use us in this world to further Your kingdom. But as we gather today, we want to lift up some of those uh, on our hearts and minds uh, who are in need of your tender care. We want to lift up Kelly, a 25-year-old who's been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer uh, and has had a double mastectomy, uh, is now going through chemo, and we just uh, lift Kelly to you. We pray that you would be with her, that you would fill her with your spirit and strengthen her body for uh, the remainder of her uh, chemo treatments. Uh, we pray that the surgery and the treatment will be effective and will rid her of uh, any cancer cells. Uh, and Lord, we just pray that you would be with her and encourage her and uh, help her along the way uh, as she seeks uh, to recover. Uh, we just ask your blessing upon her. Uh, we also want to lift up uh, Georgina, uh, who <clears throat> is in skilled care. Uh, and uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, she is there, uh, that you would help her to feel your presence with her, uh, that perhaps this might be an opportunity for uh, the two of you to get to know each other better. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you would be with her. Whatever uh, happens, we just pray that you would bring her uh, healing and uh, that you would help her to come to know you uh, in a deep and life-changing way. And we just uh, pray your blessing upon her. We want to lift up Joe, uh, who's undergoing chemotherapy, uh, cancer treatments. And uh, again, we just pray that you would fill him, uh, strengthen him uh, for his treatments. And we pray that they are effective, uh, that, uh, that you will rid him of all signs of cancer and bring him back to health. Uh, we want to lift up Kathy. Uh, she <coughs> goes through this uh, cervical fusion uh, procedure and... Uh, Lord, we just pray that that uh, goes well, uh, that it goes smoothly, that there's no complications. Uh, we pray that uh, it is effective in uh, treating her and uh, relieving her of discomfort and pain. Uh, but also in the meantime, uh, as neither she nor her husband uh, will be able to drive, we just pray, the Lord, that you would work that out and uh, make sure that they have transportation wherever it is they need to go. And uh, Lord, we just pray that, pray that you would be at work in that whole situation. Uh, and Lord, <clears throat> we also want to give you thanks for the many 
blessings that you shower upon us, uh, and most especially as we prepare for uh, yet another upward season, we give you thanks for uh, the 220 uh, kids that uh, have already signed up and for uh, all of those families that will be touched by this program uh, this year. And we pray for those who, who may be thinking about it and may not have signed up yet, uh, Lord, that you would draw them, uh, and Lord, that you would be uh, continuing to bring not only um, kids into that program, but uh, more volunteers and more people to, to help out with the program, and, um, and Lord, that you would just continue uh, to bless us and bless uh, our community through that program. Uh, all these things, Lord, we lift to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ashers will now come forward, we will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you are a guest or visitor with us, please don't feel obligated to put anything in the plate. Your presence here is gift enough.
us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the resources that you give us. Help us, Lord, to be able to recognize uh, the resources, to use them for your honor and glory. And Lord, we offer these back to you that you might use them to further your kingdom in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, you are created by God and you are loved by God. All that you have and all that you are has been given to you by God. And He expects you to use all that you are and all that you have to further His kingdom in this world. So go out into His world to spread your light wherever you go. And do it all in Jesus' name. Amen.